So we've covered the two new calendars added to the advanced template. Going back to the reports, next we cover the two alert reports. Now, the alert reports enable you compare, for instance, from the maintenance section, recall here you define your planned schedule. So what you expect the template to remind you for fixed intervals. The activity section is where you enter when you actually perform the maintenance. So for instance, recall here we have three maintenance. There's one that is due on the 29th of October for the flow filter, but we actually haven't done this because in the activity section, it's blank. So the alert report is going to enable you to compare what you plan to do versus what you've actually done so that you can be able to know the activities that are still pending. So once you go into the alert report, you notice it has a different interface because this is a report that can be printed or you might want to export it and send out. So at the top, to kickstart the template or this report, you simply select the car. We currently have only one car. When you do, it's going to automatically return the purchase date, the plate number, and the chassis number. Next, you click the refresh button and the template will automatically give you a maintenance activity summary. Notice it's going to list all the maintenance activities that we've planned to do. So the scheduled preventive maintenance is oil change, fuel filter, and brake pad. Now the oil change, the first one we did was on the 29th of August, so it's completed. This is the date you entered into the template. So let me go back here. So when you're entering the activity, the last maintenance date you enter here, that's the date we're referring to. So in the reports, that's the first date that will be displayed and that's why it's completed. The next date will be automatically calculated based on the interval that you put. So the interval we put, it's equally completed because we've entered it in the activity section. So this is oil change. 29th October completed. Let's verify that. Recall that oil change we did add interval of two months. So the first was on the was on the 29th of August, which is completed. Two months from then, August, September, October, we get the 29th of October. Now, if this is completed, it has to be in the activity section. So if you go to the activity section, recall we added it here. Oil change for the 29th of October. So that's why in the report it shows as completed. The next is the fuel filter change. The first, which is what you enter, so it's completed. The next, recall this one we entered a monthly basis. That's why we have June, July, August, September, and we're currently in October. If you refresh this report next month, it's going to add November. The following month is going to add December. So this is a dynamic report. It's going to stop based on today's date. So we're currently in October, so it's not going to show you any date that is beyond the next scheduled date from today's date. I don't know if that's clear. So this is on a monthly basis. So since 29th of October is now passed, it's going to stop here. But tomorrow, if you refresh this report, it's now going to show you the 29th of November because that's the next schedule. They're all pending because we haven't added any activity. So now we're going to add activity for the 29th of July, 2019. So we're just going to backdate. So if we go to the maintenance section, we click on add activity, meaning that we've actually performed this maintenance. So it's very important that you recall the dates because it's the date that the template is going to use when generating the report. So recall the date we have here is the 29th of July, 2019. So you need to do is under activity, new service, 29th of July 2019 because that's the date that it was planned for. You select the car, the mileage, if you can remember the mileage, it's important to add it to. The maintenance type, it's a preventive maintenance and recall this is, I think it's a well filter change. So the date is very important because this is what the template we use to cross-reference to see if it tallies with what you planned. So once you click enter, it's going to store that in. So now we're telling the template that the planned maintenance on the 29th of July has been performed. So that way, if we go back to our reports, go back to our alerts, we refresh it, we should now see completed for that particular date. So now this is now completed. So whenever you plan a particular activity, when you actually conduct the activity, you need to enter it in the activity section. So if you click on maintenance, the first section is where you enter the planned schedule. That's why it's called a schedule. 
you plan it here. When you actually conduct the maintenance activity, you need to enter it as an activity where you indicate the actual cost of the activity and all of that. So the template is going to compare the two sections together so that you can be able to, at a glance, know, okay, these are the dates I was supposed to change the flow filter. However, I've changed it only these two days. That means I missed one on the 29th on the, in September, and the most recent one I'm supposed to do it today. So it just gives you a structured breakdown. The same for the brake pad. The first was on the 29th of July, which is complete. The next time I'm supposed to do this is the 29th of November. It's still pending. It is not yet due because we're currently in October. But from here, you can just be able to have a glance on the summary activities for any selected car. And it's dynamic. So as you add additional activities, it automatically updates this report. Now, the next report is very similar. It's the same alerts, but this works with driver licenses. So I'm not going to cover it because there's not so much to shorten the length of the video. But recall here we added due dates for driver licenses. So whenever the driver actually renews their driver's license, they would likely come to the HR department to inform you that their driver's license has been renewed, give you a photocopy, so you can be able to enter that in the renewal section. So what we're going to do is let me just change the dates here. So let's assume that this particular employee was supposed to renew, it was on the 17th of 2017, two years from that would be 2019 of February, which has passed because we're currently in October. That means that the next time they're supposed to renew is on the 1st of February. But within or in between the two dates, there's one renewal that should have been performed. In the same way, I'm probably going to change this to 2018. Since the renewal is every five years, so between 2018 plus five is 2023. So within this period, number of renewals is zero. So the template will automatically tell you the number of renewals that this driver is supposed, is supposed to have done. So pretty much the number of photocopies of licenses you're supposed to have in your file. So you notice if I change this, for instance, to let's assume that it's every year it expires, the template tells me that from this date to today, the driver is supposed to have renewed it once. So this field is dynamic depending on the interval and the due date. Okay, so from here now, we can be able to see that for the first driver, it expired on the 1st of February 2017. That was the last time they renewed it. It has a validity of two years, meaning this thing expired 2017, 2019, and 2021. So within this interval, I'm supposed to have renewed this license once. In the same way, this was renewed in 2018. It's on a yearly basis, meaning that they were supposed to renew it in 2019 and now in 2020. Now let's confirm this. Right now, we've added no renewal here, so they should all be pending because we've not entered that we've received any renewal information. So if we go to our reports, so once we click on it, and the first step also, just like the other, is that we need to select the driver. So at the top, you indicate the driver you want to see the summary for. Once you select the driver, it will automatically return the phone number, the license number, and the type, which is if they are full-time or contract staff. Now, once you click to click fresh, the template is going to list the first dates, which is the 1st of February 2017, which is complete. So this is probably what they gave you upon employment. Then since this has an interval of two years, it means that this expired on the 1st of February 2019. It's still pending because we haven't entered it in the activity log. The next is on the 2021, it's still pending. Now if we want to change the pending, all we need to do is to go to the driver section and then we just click on add new renewal. So once we add renewal, we enter the driver's name and then The template will automatically, once we enter the driver's name, the template will automatically return the renewal date, which is the 1st of February. Now, since this is a backdated renewal, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this to when the renewal was supposed to have happened, which is a month from this date. So that will be the 1st of February, 2019. And this can just be the date in which you got the photocopy. So once you did, you've done this, you've told the template that this renewal has been performed. So once you go to reports, you go to reports, you refresh, you notice that instead of pending, it's now going to tell you that it's completed. So that's how the template works. It works with information obtained from the activity log section.
Now, the advantage of this is that it enables you to know if particularly when an expiry date is passed. So, for instance, if you go to the driver's section, you notice that the first expiry is passed because here we claim that it expires every year. So that means that January 1st, 2019, it expired. But this column will always show you the most recent expiry. So the most recent expiry is not January 1st, 2019, because today's date is past January 1st. So this column will always tell you the most recent expiry. That's what we're looking forward to. However, within this period, one expiry is passed. So the only way the template can track, you need to tell the template that that expiry date, it was actually renewed. So that's what this report is for. It's going to list all the expiries within the time frame. So for instance, if we select the other employee, Oliver, we click refresh, it's going to list all the expiry dates. So 19th, because this is every year, but out of the three, only one is completed. So whenever the employee informs you that it has been renewed, you go ahead to the log section and then enter the log. So the most important thing is that in the log section, under renewal dates, it needs to tally with the expiry date. And once you do that, the template will automatically update. So what that means is that, so right now, if we add for the driver, so that's Mary Oliver, we just go to the log and add Mary Oliver. You know, the template will automatically return the most recent, which is 2020. But since we want to enter, enter a backdated renewal, we'll just change this to 2019. And you can enter any entry date. This is just the date in which the driver informed you. So if we go back to our reports and then we refresh, you know that the template will automatically indicate completed under that particular date for that driver. We can do the same for 2020, but we've not entered 2020. It doesn't make sense to enter invalid data. So that's how that report works. And then the last report we have is our summary dashboard. Now, this is just an add-on, just enables you to have a snapshot of all information. So to tell you at the top, the total number of cars you have in your database, which is one, total number of equipment you have, which is one. This is dynamic. As you add additional cars, it will increase. As you add additional equipment, it will increase. To the right of this, we have the preventive maintenance schedule. So this just tells you the total number of activities that are due in the current month, in the current week, and today. And this is dynamic. So by today, it means the 29th of October. Tomorrow, it means the 30th of October. So it's dynamic as we progress. So that at the glance, you can be able to know, okay, I'm supposed to perform two activities this week. Then if you want to see a breakdown of the two activities, you then go to the maintenance section. So it's just a snapshot of other sections. At the bottom, we have the financial snapshots. So it tells you the total amount you spent on fuel on a monthly basis. Total amount you spent on maintenance activities. So recall we spent seven thousand for the oil change. That's how much we have seven thousand. So this is dynamic, and it's for the current year, 2019. As we enter 2020, it will automatically update for 2020. Okay. And just to show how dynamic this is, I'm going to enter fuel for January. So I'm going to go to my, go to my fuel log, new fuel. Just select the car. This is my about 10 liters and each liter goes for 145 so that's the total any other mandatory field okay the driver that purchased it once i click on enter it's going to store that in my database and so now we should see so first of all i'm supposed to change the date to january there we go so we should now see in the month of january 1450 so if we go back to our reports metrics we should see 1450 there we go and it's automatically reflected on the charts, January 1, 4, 50. So here you can just see a summary of the total amount you spent on buying gas, on servicing the car. So you're going to combine all servicing together, preventive maintenance, and also repairs. Here you know the total number of cars, assets you have in total, the total number of activities you're supposed to do this month, this week, and today. So that's a summary of the new functionalities that we've added to the advanced template. Now recall I mentioned that there's a section where you can update all the drop-down lists. So that's the button here. So you notice that all the drop-down lists are here. You can add additional maintenance types, service items. You can add additional brands for the cars, additional categories for the equipment and so on. So here you have the flexibility of adding new items to the respective drop-down list. So that's a summary. In the description link, we're going to put the link to the standard version, which shows how the other reports work. There's an income report, expense report, so many other awesome reports. It's covered in the standard video. The link should be in the description below. Thanks for watching.